Our reading this morning is the Gospel reading, and it's a challenging Easter passage for our covenant renewal. Would you please stand for the Gospel as you're able? Matthew 25, 14 through 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability, then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me over five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been your master. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, and where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Well... Who wants to renew their covenant after encouraging scripture reading like this one? (laughs) That's very helpful, is it? Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. It's such an exciting, old, beautiful liturgy that we're going to pray through in a little while. If you don't walk out of that door in the middle of the sermon, I encourage you not to, because we have one more treat of beautiful music to hear to. It's hard, is it? 
I mean, I brought my shovel, and we are clearly encouraged no more burying of talents. Did you get that part, right? Whatever these talents are. I mean, some have money. I'm not looking anywhere. I don't know who has money. Some have a good education. Some have a solid job. Some have world experience. Some have a wonderful spouse. Some have great kids. Some have good neighbors. On and on and on. These are your talents. Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah, our bodies, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, we forget that. That's too. Don't bury it in the ground. Take care of it. Be good about it. And, you know, don't just say, I'm going to bring it back because the master is a fearful man. He wants it back the way I, he gave it to me in the beginning. It's not possible. Maintenance and preserving it the way it was when I got it is a no credit thing. You need to invest. You need to double it at least, right? That's what it says. Who wants to renew that covenant? That's a little bit of a challenge. I'm on the side of the third slave or, or servant, right? I would be the one who puts it and preserves it somewhere so, you know, I tried to share in the early service. It didn't go very well. Did you ever get that goldfish from your neighbors and say, could you take care of that for two or three weeks? Do you, do you know these stories? Maybe it's a hamster. I don't care, right? And you're scared to death. It's just a goldfish, right? But you want to bring it back alive at least. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or, or, or the grandchildren or some neighbor's nieces. Whew. I want to give it back, right? I've don't bury them, okay? Don't bury your grandchildren. Don't take that out of this covenant, sir. Do you know what I mean? No risk. Keep it easy so that you, at least in one piece, it's going to be back and it's all in one place. And the master's coming back and said, you are a useless servant. You should have invested. Take some risks. Make sure something's coming out of it. Something more than what I gave you in the beginning. I'm with the third servant still. I say that's an awful lot to ask, right? How do I know how to invest it right? We can't just start throwing money around, assets around, say, you know, just whatever, you yeah. know. He said, just out of here. Because it can go wrong. How do I know how to make the right decisions and how to say how it's invested in what the master wanted it to be like? Can I read the master's? mind. And the master would come back and talk to me and to you and say, you're absolutely right. That's a high goal to reach. It's only for the ones who are my servants, the ones I can call my slaves, the ones who will follow every moment of their lives and listen according to the instructions that you get then and then and then, not, ahe not ahead of time, right? Your children didn't come with a instruction sheet, did they? No. Mine not either, right? It's scary every day. My buddy didn't come with an instruction sheet. My education, my work experience didn't come with an instruction sheet. I need to ask and be in constant contact with that master to read his mind. He doesn't give zero instructions ahead of time. Did you notice that in the reading? When he says, here, you get two, you get five talents, you get one talent. A talent is about 15 times of a year's saving of a normal worker. 30,000 times 15 years, $450,000, right? That's one talent. He doesn't tell you the instructions ahead of time. He says, go take it. You know what to do if you're my servant. If you're not just some slave servant running around saying, I need to invest, I need to risk something. This is not the sermon about just risk whatever you can. Throw it out there, do something with it. This is the sermon for the ones who say, I want to be his servant. I want to read his mind with, first of all, get aware of all the assets, every talent that he gave me and that I'm carrying with me. But it's very clear to say, don't bury a hole and say, oh, it's nothing, you know. Yeah. 
When I talk to some of you and I say, what did you do when you were still working, working in your life? And they say, well, that's a long time ago, you know. That's brilliant what you did. Look at all these years of where you worked in different fields. Look at your education area that you're in. What are you doing with it now? Oh, that's, I'm retired. That's not what we're talking about, right? Invest now. What do you do with this family, with this partner in your life, the one that God entrusted you with? It's not your talent. It's God's. And the master is asking you to say, invest in it. Make sure you cherish it to make it a better, a richer relationship, a marriage, a friendships all around you. So when the master can come back, you say, I cherished it. It's all God's. I can read his mind what he wants me to do with this person right now in my life. What about your body? Well, I'm going in next week for another treatment. I hear that over and over, more and more. If it's God's body... And he says, you have to go through this. Well, then we replace this hip. And if it's God's body and he says, I want you to do something with it, with the capability that he gives you for right now, yes, you do it also. It's God's body. With the beauty that you have, with the talents and gifts that God has given you, if you are his servant, it's a total different game that we're playing here. You just listen to his instructions on the way. It is a special Sunday today. Now, try to repeat that after me. It's called quasi go modo geniti. Quasi modo geniti. Can you repeat that? That sounds like you knew all along what that means, right? There is a, a character somewhere, quasi modo was his first name. Who was that? Oh, yeah, all right. For the ones who don't speak Latin around here, don't dig and bury your education, right, that you have quasi like the newborn children, geniti. This is a Sunday for the like the newborn children today. The first Sunday of Easter, the Orthodox Easter day, the day where we're really starting to get into this out of Easter holiday, whoa, it was stressful, it was good. Now it's starting to sink in what you shared with us earlier it's that Sunday where the newborn children are starting to walk a walk by faith in Easter spirit, trying to investigate what on earth has put there in our laps and we should do with it something. Someone came into the office the other day and said, you know, I just wished I had this unexcited time in my life. Every day is different. Every day I need to figure out what I do with my days and I hate it. I want to go back to this routine life, you know, where I just, it's predictable. I get up in the morning and then I'll feed the cows and then I'll go over there and I water the plants and then I'll go and start preparing for a good breakfast. And it's all, I don't need to think about it all the time. And I just listen carefully, moment after moment, for new instructions what God is giving me. Like the newborn children Sunday is that Sunday where we're just sitting there unexcited and say, I don't know, let me find out what talents God has put in my village, in my area. Do I have a good partner? We're not discussing that right now. Do I have a good neighborhood? Did he bless me with a rich work experience, with some training I have? with a gift that is unique. This is not the America Has Talent show, right? But something that I have. And can I start walking step by step, slowly, like a newborn child, quasi modo geniti, and say, oh, all that is not mine, but he's giving it to me to loan it to me for a while so that I will enrich it and risk it and the East spirit around that will spread all around me. That makes it easier, right? A little child doesn't have to fear anymore. It's just that child who will listen. When mom says, do this, well, Patty, is that right? George will do it because mom said it most, <laughs> most of the time. When mom says, well, we're going to go this way, she's going to follow, right? Sometimes. 
It's easy when you are a child, a newborn Easter child who follows closely to the instructions of that master, of that mom, of that parent who's going to tell you, now risk here, now risk there, now risk whatever he tells you to do. We're close. We're early in Easter. Our God is calling us, and we're going to go into the liturgy in a minute, to relieve you from that pressure, to fear how on earth do I keep together what he gave me that it doesn't fall apart. He entrusts you and I. He trusts you and me to see you will do the right thing with it. If I gave you that person in your life who is all your life, you and he or you and her will go and make that happen to be something growing, something that is invested well. If he gives you that one assignment in your life and you're going to go for it, then he will bless it and say, listen to my instructions on the way, how I'm going to spend my week. Like a newborn child, you just have to go closely with that master and not fear the outer darkness, wherever that is, but to say, he trusts you, invest it, see what you got, and don't ever bury it anymore in the ground. Oh, that's nothing. Nobody needs that. It's not mine. It's his. It's not my life. It's his life. What a relief. And so we will celebrate in a minute after singing the next hymn, Rom, and go into that liturgy together, the old words that John Wesley put together to say, this is my covenant. If you call me God, I want to be the first or the second servant or slave. I want to taste that apple and taste how sweet and how rich your love and your relationship with me is, as our finance chair told us this morning. I want to see how this dish detergent, dish soap, is just going to push away all the dirt out of my life. But I want to follow you for every day, new instruction. Are you ready, church? And God's word and his directions will be more faithful than anything we ever expected. In Lord's spirit, we pray. Amen.